Uh, I've been in it for about three years now, but I've progressed pretty quickly. Um, started at pretty much Help Desk, and I work for Raytheon. Um, a little bit about me. I'm a senior cyber threat ops technician, too. It's a title. Don't get hung up on it. What do I do? I do uh, consulting. I do threat hunting. And I do um, analyst work for Raytheon. As a contractor, they contract us out to other big organizations. My history, I was an IT security analyst for a year at General Dynamics. Um, worked for OTS there. I was also a SANS facilitator at SANS 2018. I worked the GSED course there. I also was a network infrastructure engineer at Alpha 2. And I was an IT technician at FSU CU. Certifications, I have some um, certs in this industry. The more you get up, the more you realize some people are lucky and they get them and they aren't great at it. Sometimes people have hardly any certs and they're awesome at it. So take that with a grain of salt whenever you see it. But if you're getting started, certs are a good way to get past HR, I will say that. Uh, I don't actually have CEH, but I did the attendance course. Honestly, it's 900 bucks. It's great on a resume. The actual course doesn't really teach you how to hack. It's kind of like, here's a Trojan. You can take screenshots with a Trojan. All right, that's cool, but how do you actually get a Trojan on there? How do you actually get actions on objectives? How do I actually laterally move in an environment? It doesn't tell you about PowerShell Empire. It doesn't tell you about Mimikast. Hopefully they'll update that sooner or later. Uh, the big thing is right now, we need people in our industry. We have a skill shortage. Uh, this. Pretty much highlights it. You have uh, CSO talking about it. More than half organizations report problematic shortage in cybersecurity skills. So the big thing is, do you have critical thinking skills? Can you troubleshoot? Are you a self-taught teacher with a desire to learn? I put Google up here because that is your friend. You have to be able to learn. You have to be able to Google stuff. Someone's going to come to you and say, hey, I need this implemented on my network. You're going to go, I've never worked with that before. What's going to happen? You're going to have to learn how that device works. You're going to have to learn how to deploy it, how to properly deploy it, and do it securely. Path to cyber. Basics, get A+. Plus. Um, if you're doing coding or anything like that, that's great too. You can definitely get that route. That's not the route I went. Um, I'm not quite familiar with that route, so that's not quite geared. Uh, for this talk, um, you can pretty much replace the basics of networking and help desk with uh, actual programming knowledge. Uh, it's just different sides of of the of of the spectrum. There's so many jobs out there and so many specialties that there are. So get an A plus, go to Net plus, learn sysadmin stuff. You can get a Microsoft cert and then get security plus. And the way I do this is because you want to know how end users are. You, you learn about end users experience and how to troubleshoot at the help desk and the A plus level. Net plus, you learn how everything's connected. Sysadmin, you learn how the servers run. You learn about the domain administration. You learn about trust. You learn about forces. So it's a great way to familiarize yourself with an actual environment. Right now we have some people coming through um, you know, you get out of college and you haven't actually done any of the hands-on work and they're trying to jump straight into analyst roles. And a lot of times the hiring managers, they're wanting to see two plus years of actual experience. So if you are in college right now, try to go get a networking job or something, you know, just try to get something because I, I can tell you if you get experience and you get that degree, then you're just gonna be that much more of a hot commodity. Like we said, job progression, help desk, you know, learn to troubleshoot. Network or sysadmin, both learn it all. A lot of places around here are starving for good talent. If you can go in and you can be a multi-hat person where you can do help desk, networking, and sysadmin, someone will hire you and you will get amazing experience. That's how I learned the way I did. Help desk, I love this one. Hello, IT, have you tried turning it off and on again? That's a lot of help desk. You'll find out if you ever work it. You'll go to a person's uh, workstation and you'll be like, oh, this isn't plugged in. Must have got kicked out by the night crew when they came and vacuumed it up. 
Uh, Cyber AIT is a great resource. It's free. Mike Myers Udemy course usually runs about 10 bucks. Uh, his book as well is really good. And uh, CompTIA Cert Master. That's a little bit pricier, but if you can do it, uh, that's a good one to kind of cram for, for one of the certs. And uh, I can't say enough, play in labs, do stuff on your home equipment, you know, mess around with your Soho router that you have at your house. And then once you get a job at help desk or whatever you do, perform the job in a secure manner. Make sure they know you're interested. If you tell them that you're interested in security, and you're actually a go-getter at help desk, people will start feeding you more and more stuff to do. I would say plan to spend six months to a year here. If you're in college, go ahead, do this your freshman year. Get on a help desk somewhere. Just do it for six months or a year. It's some valuable experience and people like to see it on a resume because it means that you know what the end user experience is like. So that means when you're setting up security policies, you know what the end user should expect from those security policies. Network Internet Plus. Cyber again, it's free. Mike Myers has another great course. He also has another great book. Cert Master again. Cisco Pass Packet Tracer. It's a good lab that you can mess around with. Lots of people sell stuff for it. Also, GNS3 is another visualization or another um, VM version of Packet Tracer. Uh, it's free though. And Packet Tracer, I think you have to sign up for Cisco. Also, once again, make sure you're performing your job securely. If you're in charge of administrating a firewall because you're on a network, please don't put allow any any and then block the ports. If anything, block everything and then only allow what's needed. It's crazy to say that, but I've seen it. I've seen it too many times. Also consider CSENT. Um, instead of NetPlus, it's a Cisco cert. It's highly regarded in the industry. Cisco tests are hard. Um, if you get it, great because that means you, you know your stuff and you know how to troubleshoot Cisco networks. Now the issue is, is you might go get Cisco and then you might walk into a shop that has all brocade switches. That could be fun. Plan to spend one year in here. Just, you, you're just building up different layers. You just want different experiences. You don't want just one experience. You want to learn the whole gamut. So then we're going to move on to sysadmin. I did a lot of sysadmin type stuff even at my first job and then uh, even as network um, networking, I still did sysadmin work. You get hands-on experience. You learn more about the networking of the systems and how the systems actually communicate. You're not dealing with troubleshooting physical connection or VLANs. At this stage, you're actually working on, you know, oh, how does DNS work in our environment? How do we set up this, uh, you know, how do we set up different ways to authenticate, like radius in our environment? How are certain things going around? and how does our environment really work when it comes down to domain administration. Labs are huge here. Go ahead, deploy your own system. You deploy your own domain, set it up, rebuild it, configure policies, see if the policies are overbearing, get three users set up, a few computers, and also once you get this set up, the great thing about it is if you want to go offensive, now you have a domain you can hack. That's fun. Also consider Microsoft certs, we've already mentioned that. Consider VMware certs too. If you know VM and you are able, and you're able to manage it well, there are certain places you can go that will definitely need that. So now we have a great foundation because we did all this. We don't have this foundation that's crumbling, all right? We have solid experience through everything. So now we're gonna move on to getting a security job. Start with Sec Plus. When you're doing domain admin administration or networking, or you're doing basic coding someplace, um, your first coding job, go ahead and start working on Sec Plus. It's a great foundation for you. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it, taught me a lot, and it was a good foundation to have. If you do have the six and a half grand it takes to get SANS, you can go that route, but I don't have six and a half K laying around, and I doubt you will, and I doubt that it'll be really hard for you to get your employer to pay six and a half K for you to go to this. Uh, one workaround that I was able to do is I did the SANS work study. It comes out to about two and a half K. If you go online and you look up SANS work study, you can apply for this. If you get lucky enough to do it, I would suggest doing it. Why? That is a great bargain. I'm not doing the math right now, but 2.5 out of 6.5, that's, that's a heck of a lot of savings. So you are getting good training. They do have some of the best teachers there. 
I enjoyed CCNA Cyber Ops. That was a really good one. If you get a chance to do that, I highly recommend that. That will be a good setup for you to go into an actual SOC role, an actual security analyst role. CCNA Cyber Ops does a great job of going over everything uh, that you would need for that. The big thing, like I said, experience is key. People want to know that you have troubleshooting. Yes. Is the uh, CCNA Cyber Ops still free? No, it is not. They had a nice, I was privy to, um, they had a nice campaign where they, uh, they had scholarships out for people, and uh, that was really nice. I don't know the going price for that now, uh, but it, it's not 6.5, I can tell you that. <laughs> so experience is key, just having the experience of troubleshooting, knowing what a domain is like, knowing what a corporate domain is like, that's great experience, having implemented that, having managed that, having to deploy to that, that's, that's huge. People want to see that because why? If, they, if you get in their network, they want to know that you've done stuff before and you're not going to bring down their network. If you get a cyber degree and you do these jobs while in school, guess what? You will be a rock star. I'm telling you. I've been there for three years. I don't have a college degree. If you have a college degree, and you manage to do these three, four job roles during those three to four years, or five years, or however long, honestly stay there as long as you can if you want to, but you can be a flipping rock star. You know, just go out there and get some experience on your resume, and you'll be, you'll be getting job offers hand over fist. So like we said, A plus, right here, for Florida, it says one page out of 721 jobs. That's pretty good. That's a lot of job openings. I bet they're starting to pay good because it's probably hard to fill all those job openings. Right here, we have 31,000 jobs in Florida for Network Plus. Posted up on LinkedIn. 31,000 jobs are open for this. You can play, you can't find a job, maybe get in that plus. A lot of people are apparently hiring it. Security Plus, 43,000. Right now, if I run a search for Security Plus in Florida, 43,000 jobs are up there. I don't know, some of these might be thrown off um, just by the search queries uh, that they have. Maybe there's some false positives, but I can tell you there's still a lot out there. It's, it's highly needed. Organizations need it, and they need good talent too. Also use uh, LinkedIn at every recruiter you can find. Recruiters, it's, it's kind of like a used car salesman. Sorry if there's any in the building. Uh, but their job is to make money off you. But the only way they make their money is if they get you a position. So they have incentive to get you a job. That's a great thing. They're paying the butt to deal with, but they want to get you in a position so that they can make their money. So always remember that and always hold that over their head because they don't get paid until you get placed. <laughs> so make them work for it. Follow the best security professionals you can. Get on LinkedIn, get on Twitter, get on whatever. Find the best ones. SANS instructors are great. You'll stumble upon, you know, you go to a con and uh, where you watch a con online, then go ahead and add some, follow the speakers there if you think they're really good and smart. Um, that's one way just to get really good information coming in that maybe you wouldn't think of. It's, it's like constantly having teachers just feeding you little bits of information. That's really good. Check out Burning Glass. Um, it's a little outdated, but it gives you a good scope about where stuff is going. As you can tell, DC area, VA, that's a huge area. If you wanna make a lot of money, I'll tell you right now, don't do drugs, don't do anything wrong. Go up there, get a, a top secret clearance, and make 100K within like two years, maybe even less. Just stay clean, get a TS, and uh, you'll, you'll be banking. Sec plus, especially have CEH just because of DOD requirements. Uh, CyberSeek's another good tool. Uh, it has security pathways. So as you can see, there's different areas that you can start on, and it tells you where you can go. Uh, right now, obviously, the pay is well, 85000 for a security analyst is average. Um, get your sec plus. Just get up there, get some experience, get two years experience, get a sec plus. I mean, you're looking at an average salary of $85,000. Uh, 
uh, interior uh, cybersecurity consultant, they're reporting an average salary of 100000 and a uh, pen tester, they're talking about an average salary of 102. I personally, I don't know about pen testing because, I mean, I know about it, but a lot of times for those type of jobs, you're, you're working through the night because that's when, that's when your SLAs say that you have time to do it. They don't want you bringing down stuff during business hours. I, I personally don't like to work all night, but that's just me. Learn offense to better defend. You don't know how many times I, I've seen people and they're in charge of defense or they're a defender and then they don't know how offense really works. They don't understand offense. So for me, it's like I used to coach football. What was the first thing I did when I became football coach on defense? I coached linebackers. The opposite position for that on offense is a running back. I was also put in place in the running backs coach. I didn't understand it, so why coach? He said, if you want to be a good defensive guy, you have to understand the offense. Could you imagine going out at an FSU hire as a defensive coordinator for football, and then you ask him, hey, how are you going to block a 32 trap? Or how are you going to block a waggle? And he says, I don't understand offense. Is that someone you want defending in your network? You have to under understand the attacks. Know thy enemy, know thyself. So some ways to better learn this, there's Metasploitable, it's a vulnerable, vulnerable VM. You can go ahead and you can start getting your hands wet and attacking it. OWASP Security Shepherd is a VM for web app pen testing. That's a pretty good uh, resource to have. CTF365 is a good one. Neverland CTF, Hack the Box EU, and Vulnhub. These are all good sources where you can go and you can legally practice your skills legally. All right, don't do it illegally, because especially if you want to go back up to DC and make that money, guess what? They're going to give you a TS poly, and then they're going to ask you, have you ever connected or done anything that you weren't supposed to? And uh, I don't know about you, but I'm not going to try to fake a poly, especially when the US government's conducting it. Offensive tools, you got Kali Linux, it's just an operating system. We'll go over these more in depth. Inmap is a good one, OpenVaz, Metasploit, Armitage, MS Venom, it's a payload builder, Burp Suite, and PowerShell Empire. There are many other tools, Kali comes pre-built with a lot of them. We're just kind of skimming over the basics for people who don't know. Kali, it's an operating system, it's packed with tools, it's used for cybersecurity. It's not just an offensive tool, they actually have some other stuff for DFIR and malware reverse engineering. Um, and it has some awesome tools built in. Some of these you might have to add in. InMap or ZenMap, this is just a basic scanner. You're gonna scan network, find holes, find vulnerable spots to poke at. OpenVaz will help you search for vulnerabilities. So if it says like, hey, there's a Metasploit module that's known, that means, hey, that's, that's awesome because it's saying that it's vulnerable to this and I have that exploit, so now I can go exploit it. So then that brings us into Metasploit. It's an exploit framework has exploits auxiliary modules. You can set up C2 commands. Um, Interpreter is awesome. It can go into memory and you can run C2 out of that. And you, that's how you get your interpreter shells. And that just pretty much allows you, it helps you greatly own a box pretty much. And it helps get around AV. Armitage, it's a nice GUI. So if you don't like command line, Armitage is a great tool. It's also a great tool to manage uh, pen tests. Raphael Mudge, I can't say enough about this guy. He'll probably never hear me talk or give him praise, but if you get the chance, he has amazing YouTube videos. Watch them all. He, he's amazing. If you're familiar with Cobalt Strike, he's the one who brought us Cobalt Strike. He also does amazing videos on Cobalt Strike. Uh, follow his blog. If anything comes out on his blog on Cobalt Strike, chances are that it's going to rock the industry because he is he's amazing. They put out great stuff that it, it's insane what the offense can do right now. MS Vim, it's a payload generator. That's all you really need to know. Play around with it. There's a sharpshooter. There's also a brutal. I just like brutal because I, I really like the skull. Um, Verb suite, that's gonna be used for, for web app pen testing. You pretty much set up a proxy, so you intercept traffic between your browser and the server. You can manipulate stuff. Empire, this is a post-exploitation framework. If you're getting into stuff, and once you own a box, Empire is amazing. 
All right, Empire is crazy right now. The fact of the matter is, most places aren't doing PowerShell logging, and you can move laterally using PowerShell through an organization quite quickly, as a matter of fact. Uh, there's certain tools. I can run Bloodhound on an organization. Bloodhound goes out and it, it checks to see it tries to see like my quickest route to the main admin. So I can see like, oh, I can mimic cats this, and I can jump over here, and three things, you got the keys to the kingdom and you're running around. And no one even knows it because you don't, you're not moving files from one thing to another. You're just PowerShelling around and no one's logging it. Also, PowerShell now has a nice GUI. Not necessarily great for defenders because now a 13 year old might be able to do this even easier. Defense tools to get familiar with. There's a lot, a lot of them out there. For free though, security onion is a good starting point if you set up your own lab or you set up your home IDS IPS solution. Uh, there's some boxes in the back. They have two, there's computers, they have two NICs on them. You can pretty much take that, you can do this at home, run the traffic through, and you can analyze it. Um, you got Snort, that's going to be an IDS IPS solution. You have Bro, that's going to capture your network traffic and then you can all put it into the scene. That's just what security iron looks like. They don't make it look too cool. The defense tools never look as good as the offense tools. It's kind of sad. I mean that's snort. Come on, it's a big it's a big nose pig. Like that's not that great. But it's an IDS IPS. Uh bro, there you just have your traffic and you're gonna put it all this is called elk. It's Elasticsearch, log stash, cabana. The funny thing is Organizations are actually paying a lot of money and um, for seam products and a lot of them actually they just use this and they throw their own web GUI over it, they throw their own interface over it, but they're really just using Elk in the back end. Some books to have, uh, Hacker Playbook Part 1, Part 2, Part 3, they're great, Blue Team Field Manual is great, Red Team Field Manual is great. Kali Linux Revealed is free online. You can download it from uh, Offensive Security. Uh, Practical Malware Analysis is a good one for reverse engineering of malware. And the Web App Application Hacker's Handbook is another good resource. So with that, I'll open up the floor if anyone has any more questions. How do you enjoy your work? Oh. Is it advisable for, I'm in des desktop networking, I cover everything because there's only two IT for the site. Um, so, my I have A plus Net plus, working on CSENT. I'm debating do I do CCNA or do I do CCNA, DC, CCNA set to kind of get towards the direction of some more of a career at um, So, CCNA sec would probably push you more at a security engineer role. Um, this is speaking kind of broadly, it's like Tallahassee. We're a smaller market here. So with that being said, like when I was doing security stuff here, I was doing the security engineer side, plus I was doing the security analyst side. Um, so that would definitely be good because honestly, having I would do the sec just because having properly implemented security stuff, you have to do that first before you can actually analyze if that makes sense. Any other questions? Yes. What kind of labs do you have in your home environment? My home environment? Or your work environment? My work environment's it's pretty awesome. Awesome. My work environment's pretty awesome. We got a Cobalt Stripe and uh, we have a domain set up that I get to log into. Cobalt Stripe, for those who don't know, it's about $2,000 a year for the licensing. Uh, you get these awesome things called malleable C2s, um, other stuff like that. One thing that's not up here, that I highly recommend that I have myself is Flare VM. Uh, Flare VM is put out by FireEye. It has great tools, and it's a it's just a malware reverse engineering lab kind of. It's really awesome. If you get if you're in college, hands down. If you know programming, go out next uh, next fall area, maybe August time. Flare VM will put out a challenge. That is awesome. If like the FSU Cyber Club can get together and work on that challenge and actually win, um, if, you, if you can get through that, that is amazing because some of the challenges in there are so hard. And you can practice on the old stuff too. Any other questions? 
All right, well, with that, uh, thank you all very much for your, your time. Thank you.